Great sourdough bread starts with great sourdough starters, and it's such a prized possession that commercial bakers, they protect it like it's Fort Knox, and they're probably not going to share with you. But what is sourdough starter? Basically, in the days before there was commercial yeast, people needed a way to leaven their bread. So they basically created a yeast factory. And all it is is flour and water, and then there's wild yeast and wild bacteria. Um, working together, it provides both leavening, and it also creates the sour taste that you get in sourdough bread. Um, it's something that is different depending on the area that you're in because the wild yeast and the bacteria are different all over the world. San Francisco is different than it is in France. Um, one thing of interest is that, you know, it's been so prized by people that the prospectors that used to go up to Alaska, they kept this with them in a small pouch. They didn't want to eat crackers, they wanted to eat a good soft bread, and they actually became known as sourdoughs. So how do you make a sourdough starter? Well, there's three different ways that you can do it. The first is you can get one from somebody else. This one is actually from my mom, uh, came from California, and it's 32 years old, and it it really smells good. It's been around a long time. It's got a nice, nice sour smell and it really makes great bread. Uh, the second way you can get a sourdough started is that you can buy a commercial product. Um, they're available. You can go online. There's several companies that sell them. They come in a dry form and they also come in a sponge form like this. Um, probably the most fun way to do it is start it yourself. And it's as simple as taking two cups of water and two cups of flour, mixing it together. And you always want to use glass ceramic. Um, never do you want to use metal. It can actually add enough taste to it. So you mix the water and the flour together and then you're just going to cover it and leave it at room temperature. Uh, and with luck, the uh, wild yeast and bacteria that's in your house and in your environment, it's going to start fermenting and you'll see it bubbling. And once it's worked, you can keep it in a crock and you will probably want it to be about twice as big as the volume so it doesn't bubble out. Um, and you store it in the fridge, and then when you're ready to use it, you're just going to pull it out again. But there's a couple other things. You can see this potato here. And why do you have a potato here? Well, when you're cooking a potato in water, uh, you can use the water instead of plain water. And basically, the starch from the potato in the water will actually give it a little bit of a nuance. Uh, but the most interesting one for myself is actually using grapes. I would probably try and do it during the grape season. I, I, I don't think I'd try something from the store unless it's an organic store. But you're going to take the grapes and you're going to mash them. And the wild yeast and uh, the various bacteria that are on the grapes are going to start fermenting. And once it starts fermenting, you're going to strain off the liquid from the solids. And then you're going to add the flour. And then it's just the same process for making your starter. So once we have the starter, how are you going to actually use it? Well, the main thing is, is that you spend a lot of time getting it. So you don't want to use it each time you're baking and don't have anything left. So the night before you bake, Go ahead and take your starter out and let it come to room temperature. And take a cup out and then add a cup of water and a cup of flour to it. Stir it up and the next morning you're going to have about two cups of starter and then you're ready to bake. But remember, always add back one cup to the original starter so then you're always keeping it fresh and then you're always you're going to replenish it and you're not going to lose what you have. So lastly, a lot of us don't bake every week. So this is a living organism, so how do you keep it alive? There's a couple methods, and you probably want to do it every two to four weeks. One is you can stir in a little bit of sugar after you've brought it out to room temperature, or again, adding a little bit of flour in the same amount of water. You do that every two weeks to a month, and you're going to have something that's as old as this. And some of these starters, people have some, they say that are 150 years old. So we've ran all the way through from how you make it to how do you keep it alive. So what else can you make besides sourdough bread? Well, there's lots of recipes out there. And in the coming weeks, we're going to share a few of those recipes with you. Mm -hmm.